Bom, é, bom dia. Bom dia a todos e todas. É, antes de iniciar a nossa sessão e encontro com o secretário-geral das Nações Unidas, Ban Ki-moon, eu queria a, fazer um aviso sobre as traduções. Nós teremos no canal 1, tradução em inglês, canal 2, tradução em espanhol e canal 3, para o português. As três línguas serão utilizadas é, para a nossa conversa. Channel 1, English, Channel 2, Spanish, Channel 3, Português. El canal 1 inglés, canal 2 español, canal 3 portugués. Bom, é... Senhor Secretário Geral das Nações Unidas Ban Ki-moon, autoridades aqui presentes das Nações Unidas companheiros e companheiras da Cúpula dos Povos. Eu gostaria de abrir essa sessão, abrir esta, esse encontro em nome das organizações e movimentos sociais do Brasil para uma conversa honesta, sincera, com o secretário-geral das Nações Unidas. Nós agradecemos profundamente o interesse e o convite de realização deste encontro. É, e gostaríamos de iniciar a nossa conversa expressando o nosso profundo desencanto e nossa profunda frustração em relação ao documento oficial apresentado na Conferência Rio Mais 20. É, nós, da Cúpula dos Povos, e em especial nós, os movimentos sociais, a sociedade organizada no Brasil, esperávamos uma, um documento bem mais audacioso, bem mais ambicioso, frente aos desafios que nós estamos é, nos confrontando no planeta é, e entre os povos. De qualquer maneira, nós acreditamos que o diálogo e a continuidade de uma agenda é importante para que nós possamos resolver e criar saídas criativas e sustentáveis para o planeta. Portanto, aqui estamos, nós, Cúpula dos Povos, com as organizações das Nações Unidas, num diálogo franco e honesto. Para tanto, abro esta mesa e abro a palavra, passo a palavra, então, para o secretário-geral das Nações Unidas. Obrigada. Thank you. Uh, muito obrigado, Madame uh, Fatima Mello, a uh, People's Summit. Uh, our distinguished representatives of the People's Summit, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, bom dia. Buenos dias. Mucho gusto. It's a profound honor to be with you. And thank you for your taking time this morning to meet uh, with me and the representatives of the United Nations. It's a good opportunity uh, for us to exchange your views. And I'm here to listen uh, to your voices uh, because your prosperity is about people's aspirations. And sustainability uh, package is to put people first. And I want to congratulate you on convening such a successful People's Summit, and that has helped to give voice and practical meaning to those aspirations. Your summit and all that you represent has particular relevance uh, to the United Nations. The United Nations Charter begins with the words, we the peoples. I like to remind people that, again, UN uh, starts with the U. The United Nations is a U organization. It is a U house, and it belongs to all the people of this world. 
Nowhere is this, is this more apparent than in the area of sustainable development on which we have been discussing uh, many days, many months. Civil society has come a long way in engaging with the United Nations sustainable development processes. 20 years ago, even though civil society was mobilized uh, throughout the world, and you had a wonderfully lively and effective global forum here in Rio, there were few, few formal mechanisms to bring your voices to official meetings at the Earth Summit. Things are very different now. I say often that we have opened the doors of the United Nations. But the truth is that you played a key role in making that happen. Uh, today, the nine major groups of the society, whom I met yesterday, have become an integral part of the Rio Post 20 preparations and official uh, deliberations. Major group representatives and rapporteurs from the civil society dialogue days have communicated directly with the heads of state and government. I also commend the choice of themes for the People's Summit, questioning the present economic model, seeking new paradigms, and proposing a post Rio Post 20 agenda and campaign. These have complemented the official deliberations. You have helped to keep the spotlight on people's aspirations for decent jobs, social inclusion, and economic prosperity while protecting the earth as our only homes. You have also helped to promote greater corporate social responsibility, including through transparent reporting. And you have argued convincingly for a greater and more elevated space in decision, making in the future institutional framework for sustainable uh, development. The People's Summit may use a different language, perhaps more direct language than the official dialogue at Rio Plus 20. But every one of us, whether in official capacities or in civil society, aspire to the same goals. The same goal means that everybody, men and women, rich or poor, wherever you may be, including all these marginalized vulnerable groups, should be able to live with dignity and in prosperity with the human rights uh, protected. Peaceful societies and an end to poverty, hunger, and exclusion a world where all people can enjoy the benefits of opportunity and a healthy planet, a cleaner environment, and more stable ecosystems. In that spirit, I thank you for your leadership of the People's Summit and your valuable contribution in shaping the future we want. The road does not end in Rio. In many ways, it starts here. And I thank you very much for helping pave the way to the future we want. Thank you very much. I'll be very happy to listen to your views. Thank you, Madam Chair. Dando continuidade, então, ao nosso, à nossa conversa, ao nosso encontro, eu gostaria de é, esclarecer ao secretário-geral que é, nós, é, da Cúpula dos Povos, temos um documento, um documento elaborado que deverá ser aprovado hoje numa Assembleia, e esse documento é, expressa a nossa visão de mundo e nossa visão política, a, uma crítica às falsas soluções e uma visão de futuro. É, nós vamos aqui apresentar, então, um pouco dessa visão, os pontos essenciais de nossa visão política, é, é, a visão desses povos e desses movimentos que lutam por visibilidade, dignidade, justiça social e ambiental. Eu passaria a palavra para o companheiro Nimo, do Fre é, Amigos da Terra, para fazer a primeira é, intervenção. Thank you, Mr. Secretary General. 
we are indeed glad that you made this time for us to have an interaction. I, I take note of what you said a moment ago that the UN Charter starts with the declaration, we the people. Uh, we have concerns that this has been eroded and that it could really be said, we the corporations, because we see that corporations have been given undue influence over United Nations structures. The very purpose of the UN is to preserve the best interest of the peoples of this world, and we believe that the best interest is preserved by paying clear attention and opening up more spaces for people's voices to be heard. We note that in 1974, the UN started the UN Center, United Nations Center for Transnational Corporations. Uh, we are not quite sure what has, how much the active that center is, but we would like to see a continuation of that center. We would like to see more regulations over transnational corporations, and corporations should be more accountable. The Global Compact opens up space for corporate responsibility, but we think that this is not enough. We really seriously need corporations to be held accountable for the various environmental degradations around the world, for human rights abuses, for social dislocations, and for actively working against sustainability. We have seen over the years that it does appear, Mr. Secretary General, that we, one could say from official processes that what is good for business is good for the people. But this is not necessarily so, uh, because from climate change negotiations to the Sustainable Development Conference, this Rio Plus 20, we are seeing a heightened level of market fundamentalism, where the market is seen as having the solution to everything. In the green economy process, the green economy concept, drafted, of course, by, uh, with big influence for, from venture capitalists, we see that it's been said that nothing in the environment, biodiversity, has little value except monetary values placed on it. And we are shocked that this level of thinking would permeate official processes. And we, we believe that nature is not for sale, that nature should not be put on the market shelf, that nature should not be a commodity for speculation, because it's a very paradigm that has driven the world into the climate chaos and to the financial crisis at the multiple crises that we are facing. Uh, Mr. Secretary General, I want to thank you for your vision for sustainable energy, but we do also have concern about the sustainable energy for all process. Uh, sitting on the board and the driving seat are mainly dirty energy personnel, people and corporations who are driving the fossil fuel paradigm, and we just have a token voice from the civil society from the Barefoot College in India. And we think that this can be redressed. We need more spaces there. And we need to look critically voices that are not pushing a red or brown economy, but truly green economy. Mr. Secretary General, I conclude by saying that the need to open up the democratic space and a shift away from putting nature on the market shelf, elim elimination of corporate power over structures of decision making, can be addressed by allowing industry to have all they want to say in the major group designated for them, the business and industry major group. And then we need more democracy in various ways because the constriction of democratic space is continually leading to more problems in the world. For example, the situation in Paraguay. We're very worried about that situation and we'd like the United Nations to rise up and condemn what is going on there. Thank you, Mr. Secretary General. Muito obrigado, Nimo. Eu passo a palavra agora é, para a companheira Sharon, é, representando o sindicato, os sindicatos. Thank you, my sister, and uh, good morning, uh, Secretary General. Both within this forum and from the People's Summit, I bring you a message that the global trade union movement is bitterly disappointed at the declaration presented to the world leaders at the Rio Plus 20 summit on Wednesday. It lacks the concrete measures necessarily now to end the senseless environmental destruction 
to drive investment into the green economy, to create jobs and to reduce the alarming growth in inequity with the guarantee of social protection for the world's most vulnerable people. We say to you, words are not enough anymore. A UN process with no targets, no timelines and no serious inclusion of unions and civil society does nothing to fuel the anxiety, nothing but fuel the anxiety of people suffering from unemployment, from poverty and from environmental destruction of their lands and or their livelihoods. People believe that the rights, the rights to land and water, desperate needs for so many of our brothers and sisters, to energy and human and workers' rights were largely ignored and in some cases, including the despicable uh, backward steps on the rights of women in terms of reproductive health, frankly, we feel very angry. Decisions in Rio, for us, open a series of processes. That's the way we see it, but the outcomes are unknown. Now, while we trust your leadership, we have to say, will you be able, with us, to raise the bar in negotiations? Will the Sustainable Development Goals satisfy the ambitious, not just ambitions, but the necessary uh, um, outcomes to uh, gain confidence about energy, food, green jobs, decent work, social protection and water? Will the governments finally agree to unblock the funds to help the poorest countries catch up with sustainable development? We need time-bound commitments. We need implementation guarantees on all these fronts and we need you to guarantee co-determination with the major groups. I use that word really determinedly because co-determination is the only way that we can see to rebuild the trust of the people around the world. For workers, we need jobs. We need green jobs. We need decent work. Decent work is rights-based work. So too is the urgent need for social protection. When 75% of the world's people have no adequate social protection, don't have the dignity of survivability, and frankly, it's affordable. The UN, the UN standard endorsed just two weeks ago is essential. I want to leave you with a couple of messages. The International Trade Union Confederation conducted a global poll, a public opinion poll in the lead up to Rio Plus 20. And it's, there are shocking realities in the perceptions of people about their future. Overwhelmingly, people say that they simply do not believe that future generations won't be worse off. Their children, our children, our grandchildren will be worse off. People in developed economies, emerging economies, and indeed develop the developing world. That destroys the optimism generations have always felt for the future. And only 13%, can you believe this? Only 13% of people believe that voters have any real influence in our democracies on the economic decisions of government. That tells you that the democratic contract is broken and we have to rebuild democratic trust. You're the only person in the position now to help us make the bridge to the anger that people feel. The, there is also something that's in our hands. And as we demonstrate the leadership, uh, uh, the lack of leadership here, the lack of courage, the fact that governments didn't sit down, government leaders didn't sit down in a table like this and negotiate for one hour these issues. They accepted a presented text from the bureaucrats and the diplomats, which we find extraordinary at a summit like this. But we can certainly do something to support your ambitions. We have 175 million members. We have many partners in civil society. Our memberships overlap. We are determined to organise around a better future. We want to build the social power that make the alternate models we need, the models we're proposing, the models that are evidence-based about the future of the world based on social justice and sustainability, the only possible solution. I say to you from the trade unions, we're willing to work with you, but right now we have a lot of work to do to stop people simply rising up in anger against the multilateral process. We'll do that work but from us, there are no jobs on a dead planet and we are running out of time. So please make sure 
that it isn't just government sitting at your table, it's us as well, so we can rebuild the trust. Thank you. Eu gostaria de passar a palavra para o companheiro é, Marcos Apurinã, que vai falar em nome dos movimentos indígenas. Bom dia, senhor secretário Ban Ki-moon. É, eu quero aqui, em nome da Cúpula dos Povos Brasil e do Mundo, pedir ao senhor levar a nossa recomendação que não podemos pagar por um preço que não devemos. Nós, povos indígenas, quilombola e a comunidade tradicional do mundo, este país, este planeta deve uma dívida externa e que precisamos é, ser pago por todas as grandes empresas, empresas e bancos que, que vêm fazendo com a natureza, a mãe terra, a desgraça que hoje acontece. Por esse motivo, nós somamos força aqui na Rio Mais 20 para reivindicar direito garantido em todos os países deste planeta. Senhor secretário, nós, povos indígenas, queremos de todo o mundo que nossas terras sejam demarcadas. Os quilombolas, comunidade tradicional, está pedindo socorro. O mundo está sangrando é preciso que as empresas reconheçam o direito que prestamos a esse planeta. Não é possível fazer um desenvolvimento para um planeta sem a participação dos povos, que aqui já vivia muitos anos atrás. E hoje estamos massacrados, violentados, por um processo de desenvolvimento que nós não temos o, sequer o prazer de ser consultado. A Convenção 69 é clara quando ela diz que, tem direito, que temos direito à consulta livre e prévia informada. Senhor secretário, leva a nossa recomendação, a nossa voz a esses governantes, para que eles possam ser heróis junto com nós, povos indígenas, comunidade tradicional e todos os povos que, que defendem a natureza, não o desmatamento, não as grandes hidrelétricas, isso, para nós, não é uma economia, uma sustentabilidade, um mecanismo limpo. Vamos pensar. A natureza tem vida como nós. Precisa de viver como nós. Estou falando aqui em nome dos povos da cúpula, dos povos indígenas. Eu não aceito, como disse meu líder Raoni Caiapó, eu não aceito desgraça com nossa mãe natureza. Senhor secretário, eu clamo aqui, em nome dos povos indígenas do Brasil e do mundo, por favor, passa essa, esse, essa informação, essa palavra aos grandes líderes desses países. Não deixe como aconteceu na Eco 92. Foi firmado documento, acordos, quase nada foi cumprido. Nós esperamos, acreditamos que esse momento é o momento de fazer a mudança, mas coletivo, ouvindo a todos e não dentro de um escritório, e aí toma-se decisão. Muito obrigado. Passo a palavra agora para a companheira da Via Campesina. Good morning. Mr. Secretary General, I'm uh, speaking from the movement of peasants, small-scale farmers, indigenous peoples who are on the land, rural workers. We are some hundreds of millions of, uh, of peasants and small-scale farmers who have watched this process of the, of the Rio Plus 20 with deep concern and chagrin. We completely reject the green economy solution. We are very concerned that uh, the transnational agribusiness corporation and financial sector have usurped the talks in such a way that they have no responsibility and regulation imposed on them while small and poorer countries are being pressured 
to comply with the agreements uh, th because of their financial position and developed countries, the wealthy countries, have the option of voluntarily complying. So we are deeply concerned about the whole process and we reject the green economy and the solutions that it pretends to, to, to give us. Um, let me just give you uh, briefly one example of what we have. In Jambe province, I have a colleague who is here from a, a peasant leader from there whose story is the following. In the 1980s, his people who were dwellers in a forested area and had been for thousands of years were evicted because the government gave a logging concession to a timber company. And in 2007, that company left and they came back to the land and are making, have made it productive again. They've planted coffee and rice and as peasants are knowing that land, they have uh, a resilient community there. They have built houses and schools. In 2008, because of a red project, they were again evicted. Their villages were burnt and the area is being planted with trees under a red agreement. To offer the red as a solution for our, kind, our people is a completely bogus solution. We reject all of that. We reject the technical, the false technical solutions that are being offered to us, small scale farmers and peasants. Uh, we see it as a commodification of every living thing which will commercialize it and give those who have power in the marketplace, i.e. those who have money, the legitimate means of grabbing land, grabbing seeds, grabbing water from those of us who live there and produce food in agroecologically sustainable ways. We are being displaced and this cannot in any way be considered a solution to either climate change or any of the other crises that our ecological systems are being damaged with. So we ask you, we plead with you, we urge you to reconsider what has been the direction here and reorient it. What we need is to have control over our lands. What we need is food sovereignty. We need control to be wrested from the financial and the agribusiness sector and restored to those who know, know the land, care for the land, build culture, community, and have sustainable food systems. Thank you. Bom. É, eu farei a última intervenção. É, lamentavelmente, uma das companheiras que falaria em nome do movimento das mulheres é, é, não pôde vir a esse encontro. E me ficou a missão, em nome das mulheres, de é, apresentar a nossa, o nosso processo como cúpula dos povos. Um pouco para dizer ao secretário-geral que a, a, nossa, a nossa organização, camponeses, indígenas, lutadores por direitos humanos, religiões, sindicatos, é, movimento de mulheres, todos os movimentos, Occupy Wall Street, indignados, todos os movimentos que se, vêm se fazendo levantes contra o modelo vigente, estão unificados em torno da cúpula dos povos, ambientalistas, enfim, todos os que eu aqui me lembro nesse exato momento, e os que eu não me lembro, me perdoem, mas que estão juntos, movimento negro, movimento, é, os, os, as centenas e milhares é, e a maioria da população que não está considerada nesse modelo. Nós somos um processo que não se esgota nesta cúpula nem na relação com o processo oficial. A nossa expectativa e nosso processo é de construção de um movimento global, de uma agenda para o futuro que possa dialogar, pressionar, no sentido de renovarmos nossas esperanças, como aqui foram 
colocadas várias dessas mensagens no nosso mundo político e nos nossos governos, de tal maneira que eles, de fato, expressem aquilo que nós, povos, estamos desejando para o planeta e para as relações entre as pessoas, homens e mulheres ocupantes desse planeta. Nosso processo é um processo que continuará e que esperamos, com todas as vozes, como nós podemos ver é, na nossa marcha, é, com mais de 80 mil pessoas, é, se reproduzindo em todas as partes do mundo, nós não ficaremos em silêncio. Nosso processo aqui é, iniciado tenderá, e é nossa expectativa, e é nosso desejo que nossas vozes sejam, de fato, ouvidas. Nós temos um documento que lhe entregaremos, um documento é, que ainda será aprovado na Assembleia de hoje, mas que já indica um pouco da nossa visão de mundo, da nossa agenda para o futuro, e estamos abertos e gostaríamos que as Nações Unidas estivessem abertos a esse composto de setores que não fazem parte dos major groups e que também, é, assim como os major groups pediram a, a retirada de seu nome do documento é, é, por não a, concordarem com a pouca ambição desse documento oficial, nós também é, a, apoiamos, inclusive, essa posição, porque nós não fazemos parte, não queremos fazer parte deste documento da maneira que ele está. Na nossa visão, na visão de futuro que temos, nós teremos que ser muito mais ambiciosos, nós temos que ser muito mais capazes de transformações efetivas, com financiamento, com propostas concretas que nós temos para construção de um mundo efetivamente sustentável, democrático e diverso, onde caibam todos e todas desse planeta e uma mãe natureza preservada. Eu agradeço, secretário, e aqui passo a palavra para você. Thank you. Uh, muito obrigado, uh, Madam uh, Chair, and distinguished uh, representatives of the civil society. Uh, I'm very pleased to uh, visit uh, Brazil again. Just let me say in uh, Brazil. Estou muito feliz de estar no Brazil. <laughs> I have listened very carefully uh, all, all what uh, you have said. Uh, it's not the first time that I'm meeting uh, civil society leaders, uh, but my meeting today seems to be most important one. Over many, many uh, meetings which I have had with the civil societies, because we are now nearing the end of our many months, even many year long uh, negotiations of uh, Rio Plus 20. Uh, the reason why we decided to meet in Rio was to reaffirm the political commitment uh, which was adopted 20 years ago. During the last 20 years ago, while the world leaders had a very ambitious uh, uh, goal in the name of the uh, First Earth Summit. Uh, they thought that uh, they behaved, they acted as if we have uh, two or three planet Earths. Uh, they behaved as if um, the way to prosperity didn't give them any reason to pay attention to our limited finite resources of our planet. That was our mistake and we are very much committed not to repeat uh, such a mistake. It's a very good time uh, for us to really uh, recharge our determinations and political will uh, to move ahead for greater uh, sustainability path. This is what uh, we are going to achieve uh, in Rio. I heard from uh, Chairperson Mello and uh, some of you expressing deep concerns or even more ambitious uh, goals of this uh, uh, target. 
When I was a, a middle school boy, we normally, the, when you learn English, the first uh, word which we learn that boys be ambitious. This is what we learned. Boys be ambitious. I don't know why they say boys. Must have meant the youth. Uh, youth. And that doesn't mean that the uh, girls are excluded. The boys be ambitious. That's what uh, we learned. Then the, my principal of uh, middle school was saying that put your head above the cloud. That means boys be ambitious. Aim high. Your, your head should be always above the cloud, above the cloud. But put your two feet firmly grounded, firmly grounded, and move step by step, step by step. That is the way you can achieve, realize your dreams. So have a big dream, but you need to be very practical. This world is the sum of uh, member states. And member states, individual member states, are sum of people. So you are the foundation of all. That's why UN Charter said we the peoples. And that's why the main purpose of this Rio Plus 20 is to put people first. That's what I said in my opening, opening uh, statement uh, on Wednesday. Now, with this. Uh, just the initial remarks, uh, I may just explain to you uh, why I believe uh, this outcome document, though I take note of your concerns, that uh, it should have been more practical, more ambitious, but I believe that this is a good document. It, it provides a firm foundation and solid foundation uh, on which member states can move ahead. Now, what is more important is not the words, not the language in the outcome document. And so implementation, member states have discussed the seriously the means of implementation. This has been one of the five major controversial and contentious issues particularly by the civil societies and particularly by uh, developing world, the G77 uh, group. People have paid attention on that. Negotiation, as you might have uh, very closely watched, have been very, very long, very contentious, very uh, difficult. But what is encouraging is that the member states have never been acrimonious, hostile, never been hostile each other, even though all the delegations came with a different, different ideas, a different strategy. They were united, they were very much committed to achieve a world, sustainable world, in three pillars, economic, social, and environmental area. We paid more attention on comprehensive, integrated way. We didn't pay any, you know, focus on any one or two specific areas. We have discussed 26 major areas, 26 areas. Among them, what are some salient points uh, that they have agreed to establish a universal sustainable development goals that we have to continue to discuss? reflecting the interest and concerns you have uh, just expressed. This is uh, now ongoing, pro ongoing uh, processes which we will take. Uh, member states have asked me uh, to fully support uh, with the recommendations and inputs to this uh, intergovernmental uh, committee of experts, uh, open working group, and I have already uh, established um, some high-level panel of eminent persons who will look to this uh, uh, vision. Uh, member states have already also agreed to establish a uh, high-level uh, forum on sustainable uh, development. Uh, this is, again, intergovernmental uh, processes. 
Member states have given strong support, political support, uh, to energy issues. Uh, you have mentioned many, uh, uh, many of you uh, expressed a concern about the energy issues. We have um, three very ambitious targets. Uh, first, uh, by 2030, all the, all the people around the world, by that time, population may reach maybe 8 billion, will have access to energy. And by that time, we will have to be able to double the energy efficiency and double the renewable energy uh, in the global energy mix. These are very ambitious, which was recognized by this outcome document, but will be achievable. More than $50 billion have already been committed during this meeting. And overall, dealing with all these um, 26 major areas, more than uh, 600, almost nearing 700 commitments, uh, voluntary commitments have been made by government, the business communities, and civil societies. I think you, you can check all these web, web pages, uh, who made uh, what kind of uh, commitment. Again, let me, with this, uh, let me just go uh, through uh, all these uh, specific uh, questions which you raised. This outcome document calls for corporate sustainability responsibility reporting. Uh, on, uh, this is a voluntary way. Uh, you mentioned, the first speaker mentioned about the global compact. This is, I think, one of the most uh, successful partnerships which United Nations has established. There are almost uh, 8,000 uh, major companies around the world uh, in 135 countries. And there are 101 countries where they have established their national local uh, networks. They have uh, 10 uh, principles, including human rights issue. Uh, not only this uh, labor management relationship, but good governance, anti-corruption, all these are uh, very important self-disciplined, peer reviewing, peer reviewing mechanisms. This is a good uh, way that business corporations will be responsible for this, not only governance, not only their business operations, but taking care. And all the, uh, all the human rights issues and dignities and the wealth sharings. This is a very important issue. The climate change, we have, we have a separate uh, forum in dealing with the climate change. I know that uh, indigenous, not only indigenous group, people, but all of you, all of us, are affected by this climate change. That is why I have made this climate change as a top uh, agenda of the world of this day. We have uh, made a good uh, uh, arrangement uh, in Cancun and in Durban, and now it's a matter of uh, filling this uh, green climate fund. The, our target is $100 billion per year by 2020. Uh, the money is not there yet, uh, but we have established the Green Climate Fund. Uh, the Secretariat is going to be uh, de designated uh, in which country uh, this uh, Secretariat will be f uh, established. Once Secretariat is established, I think uh, we will uh, try to fill this uh, uh, fund. The document has also several reference to a full employment of decent work, especially for young people. Uh, now, United Nations is now paying uh, more, focus, more and more focuses on the youth, uh, providing them uh, equal opportunities, uh, not only for job, but social and economic and political uh, opportunities. This is Sustainable development goal process will continue to discuss goals, targets, and indicators. Uh, I have uh, emphasized uh, critical areas like uh, water scarcity issues, food crisis issues. Even before this uh, package recognized 
the food crisis issues, in 2008, I have already established high-level task force on global food crisis. And we have initiated uh, this uh, sustainable nutrition uh, upgrading, upscaling the nutrition, uh, which is a um, uh, very important aspect of a food crisis, uh, providing nutrition. So, and energy, I have already mentioned, and cities, livable cities, and land degradation issues. And I'm confident that this process will to emphasize uh, your, your concerns. We have also recognized that the rights of indigenous people uh, in the document, the UN champion, their rights and uh, human rights and their, their uh, inalienable rights as a human being uh, in many uh, documents, uh, starting from the United Nations Convention on the Rights of um, Indigenous People. I myself have been uh, meeting many uh, indig ind indigenous group of people, <coughs> and I have been attending all these annual meetings or conventions at the General Assembly halls. Uh, coming from all around the world. Uh, we protect and recognize the right, their right to culture and heritage, uh, their land, their traditions. We will do what we can to honor uh, those rights. Uh, I mean, the green economy, uh, you, you said that you reject uh, but whatever the term it may be, this green economy has been some of the uh, some contentious issues among uh, among uh, delegations. But whatever it may be called, whether it may be called green economy, green growth, or whatever, we are trying to aim the sustainable growth, providing decent job opportunities, uh, promoting gender empowerment and uh, trying to um, uh, promote the economic growth uh, overall. But this green economy is no longer just one vision. It's not uh, one vision. It is a view, uh, it is now a tool, a tool, very important tool, to help countries as they see fit. So some countries may take it the uh, green economy, green growth as very important uh, tools, uh, but as you uh, just reject this uh, notion of uh, green economy, but rather than rejecting this uh, green economy, I think we have to find how we can make our social economic uh, situation sustainable way uh, by employing uh, social protection floors. This is what the United Nations is doing. I have issued a very important uh, report on social uh, protection uh, floor. Uh, we need to uh, uh, have this uh, green economy as the way to promote efficiencies and orient the decarbonizations and in an inclusive way, inclusion. The overcome, the outcome uh, rejects conditionalities uh, in aid and trade and uses green economy policies as only a tool, not our ideology. This is not an ideology. This is a just effective tool as we are using the energy as our most powerful and effective tools. Now on women, I think this is again, the, this is a cross-cutting issues. Women takes more than, more than half of our population. And I have been strongly urging and advocating this women's right. If uh, when they, they take a half, more than half the sky, you know, upholding half the sky, then they should be given equal rights in every aspect of our life, if not more. If not more, at least the minimum equal rights. That is a basic principle. United Nations takes it as a very important priorities, 
we have established the UN Women for the first time in the history of the United Nations. This is an integrated, very powerful, big agency uh, dealing with the United, uh, I mean, women, women uh, issues in every aspect of women, social, economic, political, and cultural, and in their own rights. The gender empowerment is uh, very important. United Nations is leading by example. If uh, countries or corporations, they, if they do not do, I thought that United Nations must lead by example to show good uh, lessons and messages. That's what I have been doing during the last five and a half years. I made the women empowerment in a decision-making positions. Then when you come to women empowerment, you can employ women in uh, just uh, meaningless uh, positions, uh, very junior, uh, minor positions. But that does not help. That does not help. We have to have uh, many women politicians, many women parliamentarians particularly, and many women who are working in decision-making positions. That's what uh, I'm doing. There are 10 countries in the world where not a single woman is represented in National Assembly. Uh, so I'm now uh, targeting those 10 countries, and I've been meeting your head of state and the government, sometimes uh, confronting them, sometimes uh, publicly uh, try to challenging uh, their uh, situations. I think uh, many governments have come out with uh, some ideas, uh, sort of employing sort of uh, special measures, special measures. It would be very ideal if uh, women on their own rights are elected in their own district uh, constituencies. But there are many countries where traditionally, for tradition, re reasons of tradition, uh, culture, etc., women find it extremely difficult to compete against the men uh, in, uh, in ballot boxes. And then in such case, at least for a transitional measure, we should have some special measure, like a quota system, etc. So by doing that, we have been able to increase the number of uh, women parliamentarians in the national government. But by doing that, I think we can make a progress. UN has been making a great uh, strides in having senior positions women, much, much more, much, much more than before during the last um, uh, five, five years. Uh, I have appointed even uh, seven women who are in charge of peacekeeping operations and political missions, who commands uh, 10,000, 7,000, 15,000 uh, peacekeepers. So they are doing excellent jobs. So. This uh, outcome document, again, the fully support and recognizes such uh, not only policies, but commit to implement uh, this women, women power. Because of the time limit, uh, I may have to uh, uh, stop here. But what I can tell you is that I am very much grateful to all of you. You have uh, stronger voices than politicians. You are basic you are the constituents of uh, electing parliamentarians, electing president and prime ministers. So you have uh, your right to speak, continue to engage in this process. Now I say that um, in Rio we have started a journey, very important journey. This is not the end. As I have introduced in uh, some of the salient uh, points which you have agreed, this journey has to continue. In every step of this journey, you have the right to engage, you have the right to raise your voice. And I'll be very happy to continue to work with you. Thank you very much, muito obrigado. Bom, declaro, declaro encerrada o nosso encontro, encerrado o nosso encontro, obrigada.